Did you know that every two seconds someone in the United States needs blood or platelets? This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 133. Coming up, we explore how donating blood can be good, not just for those receiving transfusions, but also for the donor. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's a podcast dedicated to navigating how we can improve our health and well-being through small healthy habits we can start implementing right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica, and every other week we'll sit down with a certified expert and we discuss topics that cover a wide variety of things, nutrition, fitness, and a lot more. And on this episode, we're diving deep into the benefits of donating blood and what those benefits can have on our health. With us today is care management physician of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Dr. Angela Seabright. Doctor, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks so much. I know you've treated, you know, patients of multiple ages over time, so this will be interesting to get your feedback about, you know, more than anecdotal research. But the stats on this are really something, and I've been a donor for a long time, but I see these stats and it still kind of blows my mind. Approximately 29,000 units of red blood cells are needed every day in the U.S., as well as nearly 5,000 units of platelets. That's every day. And 6,500 units of plasma, according to the Red Cross. Also, according to them, an estimated 6.8 million people in the U.S. donate blood every year. That adds up to 13.6 million units of whole blood and red cells blood collected annually. Even when I hear those numbers of the number of people giving blood, doctor, I still think to myself, really? Out of our entire population, only 6.8 million are donating. That seems low to me. Yeah, it's a small percentage and there's a great need, like you mentioned. So just a donation of blood can save up to three lives. So we hear that. You may get an email about it. I just got an email this morning because I gave platelets about, it's about eight weeks ago. And, you know, today's email was, hey, I get a free tumbler and a $10 gift card if I go in. I mean, they're trying really hard, right, to kind of get us to do this because the platelets are a little different. And I want to go a little deeper on that. But it looks like we've got to coerce people. We've got to reel them in to get them in to give blood. Yeah. And like you said, once you've donated, then you realize the process, it's not so bad. And so many people, once they donate once, they become faithful donors and they repeatedly donate. So I think that's part of the draw is to get people through the door. And once they get in and see what it's like, they kind of alleviate some of the fears and concerns that they have. So what might seem obvious is that we're helping other people. And when you I think most people, when they think they're serving a cause greater than self, you know, they get a reward. You feel good that you did good for somebody else. But then there's also something more than the people that are on the receiving end of your blood. What might not be so obvious is there can be benefits to your own health, the health of the donor. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's a really great point. And it is interesting to note that there are actually health benefits to donating blood. So, One of the benefits is there's a potential for learning some health information while you're donating blood. Now, just as a disclaimer, donating blood is in no way a substitute for a regular checkup or a visit to your doctor. But when you donate blood, you go in, you have a nurse, they check your vitals, like your blood pressure. They do a finger poke to check your hemoglobin levels. Your blood is also screened for some infectious diseases that you will be notified about. So it can alert you to some health issues that you may not have otherwise known about. So that's some helpful information right there. Another benefit is in regards to iron. So iron is a very important mineral, which is part of our hemoglobin, the protein in your red blood cells. But having too much iron in your blood can also contribute to health problems. There's a condition called hemochromatosis, which is a rather common hereditary condition, but it causes your body to have an excess of iron. And the excess iron is actually detrimental to your organs and it can damage you know, your liver, your heart. People with this condition, they have symptoms such as cognitive problems, fatigue, arthritis, skin rashes, skin changes. And the treatment for this condition is actually periodic phlebotomy or blood draws to remove the iron. So you can imagine that, you know, if these people, some of them choose to rather than go to a local lab and have their iron or their blood drawn off and discarded, they actually regularly donate their blood and put it to good use. And then just as you mentioned, Chuck, that benefit of donating blood and how it makes you feel good, there's definitely 
a positive association on your well-being when you know you're helping others and and saving lives. So you may lose a pint of blood that day, but you gain a sense of pride and connection to your community when you know it's for a good cause. So I've had a few interesting experiences in my adult lifetime giving blood, and one of them was related to iron. So I got back, you know, probably from an annual wellness check, a physical, my blood work, and it showed I was off the charts on iron. Uh, It wasn't crazy, but it was past what's normal. So I said to the doctor, well, what do I do? He said, go give blood. So I started giving blood. Well, it turned out, I I don't know, would that be a false positive that I didn't have this issue? It was not really an issue because the next subsequent blood draw has shown that it didn't even show up as a problem. Interesting. But I thought, wow, how can I get the iron out of my body? It's not like I'm eating calves liver every day. And of course, it turned out that it wasn't a real deal. But it was interesting because I thought that's a very intriguing proposition for someone. It's not a malady, I guess. It could become one. But you wind up having a reason to give blood that actually helps you out physically. Right. It does. And people feel so much better. So, you know, with that level, you know, that was a false alarm for you, but it did get you thinking. And sometimes the ferritin level can be a little bit elevated. It's an acute phase reactant. So sometimes if your body is there's some inflammation or some stress going on in your body that can transiently elevate that level. So but yeah, it definitely gets you thinking and people don't feel good when there's too much iron. So just like everything else with our body, there's a fine balance. So we've kind of run through this idea of giving blood, platelets. I've mentioned plasma as I was going through some of the stats. Can you unpack that for us? What are the different types of donations that we could be asked to make or decide to make? Yeah, so there are four components of our blood. We have the red blood cells, which give blood its color. Red blood cells are also um, important for carrying oxygen throughout our body. We have our white blood cells, which are important for fighting infection and disease. We have our platelets, which are small fragments of cells in the blood, which help our blood to clot so that we don't bleed. And then we have plasma, which is the yellow liquid portion of our blood, which carries protein and other enzymes and antibodies. So with donations, you can donate your whole blood, which is kind of the traditional blood donation. You can do just the red blood cells. It's called a power red donation. And usually more red blood cells are taken out through this process than through, you know, a whole blood donation. And the red cells are given, you know, for trauma patients, emergencies, anyone suffering blood loss. You can also donate platelets, which are commonly used for cancer and organ transplant platelet patients. And then plasma is commonly used for trauma, burn and shock patients. So if I just go give blood at the church next door to where I live, which is coming up, I think, next month, you know, as we head into the month, if I give a traditional pint of blood, does the Red Cross then parse that out or do they keep it as whole blood? Yeah, they usually do parse that out. So they do want to separate some of the components. And it's interesting you mentioned that because when you donate through the platelets, like if they want to grab the platelets from the whole blood, it's not going to be as many platelets as they would get if you did a designated platelet donation. So a single donation of platelets can yield several units of donation, whereas you would need about five whole blood donations to make up a single transfusable unit of platelets. So my platelet giving a couple months ago, there were only two things that got my attention. One was it's longer, right? You have to have time. You have to give it a couple hours, I think, to be able to do it. And if you're willing to do that, fine. The only downside for me was where I went to give the blood, and I suspect this is everywhere, there was a TV monitor and I got to pick like any movie on the planet. So I'm watching this movie and I kind of wind things up at at about two hours and it was going to end at about 2.15. So I missed the end of the movie and I still haven't gone back to watch the rest of it. But, you know, if that's the biggest problem I had, which is what it was, it's like no big deal, right? Right. Yeah. The platelet donation is a little bit longer, so you may enjoy, you know, a shorter movie while you're there. Yeah, right. Well, just be advised. That may be a good idea. How do you know that you can give blood? What if you've never done it before? You have no experience. How do you know you're able to give blood? Well, in general, um, you can give blood. Most people can give blood, but you can check the requirements because they are based on the donation type. They vary a little bit depending on if you're donating platelets or plasma or you know just the red cells. But in general, you must be 17 years old in most states. 
16 if you have parental consent and you must weigh at least 110 pounds. And so some people ask, well, why is there that minimum weight? And that the reason for that is your blood volume is determined by your body habitus or your weight and your height. So individuals who have a low blood volume may not tolerate the removal of blood. And yeah, and so that just goes back to the safety first when it comes to donation. Keeping donors safe and recipients is the highest priority. So, you know, we don't want to take, the last thing we want to do is take out blood from someone who really can't tolerate it. You want to feel well. So if you're sick, if you have a fever or a cough, or if you're on antibiotics to treat, you know, sinus infection or lung infection, it's not a good time to give blood. They do check, you know, your blood pressure and they do that finger poke to check your hemoglobin to make sure that you meet certain parameters to donate on that day. And then, you know, a lot of people wonder, well, if I have high blood pressure, diabetes or other conditions, can I donate? Usually the answer is if those conditions are well controlled, you can donate, but certainly you'll be screened with a very thorough questionnaire when you arrive to donate. I know that they check your pulse, too, with the blood pressure because the only other experience I've had, I have a traditionally low resting pulse. It's just my normal, right? It came from years of jogging, which I've, sadly my knee won't let me do. But once I went to give blood again at a church, they said, no, it's too low. Can you go run the stairs a couple times? And again, that was the biggest downside. I've, I've had all these downsides that are no problem. You know, it's just that it's turned into be something that's kind of cute and gives me a story to talk to you about years later. So, yeah, they want to make sure you're good. I've always wondered about this. So I give a pint of blood, not so much how fast it regenerates. Is it actually making the blood healthier that it has to reproduce? You know, yeah, some people do say when you donate the blood, you're making your body, you know, you're stimulating your body to create new cells. And that's always a good thing, right? You're keeping your body in check. You're making new cells. You know, normally our body should be able to do that. But it seems like you're giving a little jump start. So some people do say that when they donate blood, they feel like they're keeping things in check and their body is working to create more blood cells. And it does regenerate relatively quickly. So you talked about several of the upsides, or we both did, of donating blood. Are there any others that come to mind or maybe go over that list again? What are the positives for you to give blood? So number one, it makes you feel good just because it's you know, it's that sense of altruism, helping others, saving lives, being connected to your community, removing any excess iron. You know, too much iron in your body can be detrimental to your organs. And so removing that iron is also a good thing, especially if people have iron overload conditions. And then finding out about your own health. I mean, when you go and donate blood, you get that blood pressure check, you get the finger poke to screen for anemia, and they do screen your blood for other infectious diseases. But again, that's it's not a good way to get checked. Always go check your doctor, but it's another layer of eyes on you for sure. No, that's really good. And if you've given blood or you're tempted to make a donation, how often can you do that? Because I know I've got a buddy who I just saw him put his card you know, you get a, you not only get the sticker, like I voted sticker, you gave blood today, but you get a card. And it's kind of cool that you can see over time how you've given blood and you're registered. So he put his on social media to say, hey, I did it again. And look, he got some special, you know, uh, hash mark in his years of giving. How often should you actually be donating blood? What's healthy? Yeah. So first, I think it's great to, you know, post and let friends and family know that you're donating blood just to bring awareness to it because it's not always on everybody's radar. And so the frequency of the donation really depends on what type of blood you're donating. So whole blood donations can be made every 56 days, so up to six times per year. Power Red, that red blood cell donation, because they're taking more of those red cells, you can donate less frequently, so it's every 112 days or up to three times a year. Platelets can be donated much more often. You can donate every seven days up to 24 times a year. And then plasma donations, you can donate every 28 days or up to 13 times a year. And that frequency is astounding. I would suggest that most of the people I know who give blood, including myself, I don't get close to those numbers and frequency. That actually encourages me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, always going to be a little bit more conservative. They definitely, again, keeping the donor's health in mind is important. Well, keeping my health in mind is good and giving me cookies and juice is another upside to the whole deal, right? It's a perk. (laughs) And a movie. Don't forget the movie. Well, and the movie if you go for the long one, right? And what about this Power Red? Is that a lengthy process as well then? 
that's a little bit longer because they do take about two pints of blood. Oh, okay. But not as long as platelets. And again, that, there's no pain involved in this process. Just because it was a little longer process, there was nothing I noticed that made it any different or imposing on me. And that, that's just my personal experience. I didn't really have any issues, even at the end, when you kind of go into the cool down area and you get your cookies and stuff. It was, you know, easy peasy as far as I was concerned. What are some suggestions you have then for preparing those who may be listening today who are encouraged like, yeah, I've never done it. I really want to do it. What should you be thinking about before donating blood? Yeah, well, like you said, the procedure itself is pretty safe, especially for healthy individuals. You may get some side effects just as you would with a regular blood draw. So things like pain or bruising. Some people feel dizzy or lightheaded. And, you know, you might be a little tired that day. It's not really the best day to maybe go run a marathon. You really should avoid any vigorous type of exercise after you donate blood. But the good news is that these symptoms are usually mild and temporary. And I usually tell people to make sure that you are very well hydrated on the day of donation. So drinking, you know, at least an extra 16 ounces of water before your appointment. You want to also make sure that you're eating a healthy breakfast the day of the donation, healthy snack right before, maybe a little extra, you know, salty snack as well. You want to make sure that you know your medical history, including medications that you take because you will be asked. And then really, it's just a matter of, you know, getting comfortable and rolling up your sleeves. Well, you've encouraged me to do this more often, and I'm glad of that. As we wrap things up, you want to give us a a few of these tips again? What are the takeaways for all of us when it comes to donating blood? Yeah, I would really encourage you, if you have questions, talk with your doctor, check out the Red Cross website, redcrossblood.org. There's a lot of information there regarding eligibility. There's a number you can call to speak with an eligibility counselor if you have any specific questions. And, you know, I just really hope today that we raised some awareness and encouraged people to check out their local blood drives because they're happening every day. And it's a really nice opportunity to help others. And you may even reap some benefits yourself. Well, that's all good advice. And, you know, making the phone call if you're not going to go online, which is easy for most of us, but even if you don't, you can call. It's amazing how many blood drives are going on typically within a 15 to 20 minute drive. It's usually uh, several of them within a month that you could pick from. So depending on your work schedule and, and now, of course, the orange barrel season that you have to accommodate. But generally, it's pretty easy to find one. It is. And if you're really motivated, you could even start a blood drive. I know some people say, you know, they can't donate blood for whatever reason, but they know it's a great cause and they want to help. And so there's information on how you could even start a blood drive in your area. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, doctor. It's great to see you again. And thanks for all the wisdom on this. Sure. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. That's Dr. Angela Seabright, who is a care management physician of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. We're glad she was with us. We're glad you've been with us as well for joining us uh, on this Healthier Michigan podcast. We've got lots to talk about because we're now up to what? Episode 133. So we've got old episodes, new episodes coming your way, all brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show and you want to know more, you can check us out online at a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast, or you could leave us a review or a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can follow us on social, uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can get new episodes, the old episodes as well. Use them on your smartphone or tablet. And be sure to subscribe to us. Hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chuck Gatica. Be well.